All right, what's up guys? Finally, the moment we've all been waiting for, the screen to finally work. Um, so please bear with me, I'm gonna try to go through this uh, as fast as possible. This isn't as in-depth of a lesson as we usually do, so not a lot of vocab and terms are gonna be thrown at you guys. I'm trying to make it as simple as possible so you guys can understand the resources that you've used thus far, how you're gonna then apply those into creating your playbooks. Um, if you've already been uh, creating your playbooks, and this should make it easier for you. Quick recap of last week, if you weren't here, uh, we'll go over the calendar view for this upcoming week and then how that pans out for the next basic two month period. Uh, check-ins, Chris ready to check-ins with you guys to see where you're all at, some playbook help, and then we'll do a final activity for creating the pillars for your content matrix, which are subjects for the content that you'll be creating. All right, quick recap of last week. Um, we had a general meeting Monday. Those who hadn't filled out the brand checklist yet did so. Uh, we had people who, did, who hadn't done the client intake form yet complete those if they hadn't. We went over the responsibilities and products uh, for brand scientists and content creators. We'll run through those really fast again. And did the introduction into the playbook. We went over key objectives that everyone is going to be following regardless of this, uh, of if you're a nonprofit or for-profit. Went over a bit of audiences, how to tell the difference between a true fan and a non-customer, and you guys will decide who those will be this week. Tone and voice, and this is the agenda that your team was supposed to follow as you meet with your clients. Brand checklist, number one, that's you doing your research. Client intake meeting outline, that is questions you're gonna ask your client, meet your client, show them the agreement, go over this brand checklist, AKA your research for them and fill out the client intake form, and then we're moving on to the playbook. Brand scientists, you are the uh, strategy makers. You are looking at everything prior to beginning your work. You're looking at everything as you're creating your work and following the content that you're putting afterwards. You're gonna be c communicating heavily with the content creators. Okay, this is what I think the client likes. This is what our audience likes. And then you're gonna be making moves uh, preemptively to see what you hope that they will uh, have an effect with and also how that emotionally appeals them after. Um, you'll be the main communicator to the client, try to make sure you over communicate with your team all the time, see who's doing what, who's coming to meetings, who's communicated with Chris and other executive team members. We don't want any team to feel lost throughout this whole entire thing. And then you manage the client's digital profiles. Content creators, we have Bob Ross here you are gonna be putting your emotion into the art for the client, playbook and post creators, and maintaining brand consistency. That one is super key. You want the same tone throughout this whole entire course or this whole entire semester while you're doing work for your client. And then adjust content, not to bullshit, to brand scientist evaluations. Okay, we went over this last week. Easy little cycle here. Awareness, advocacy, and affinity. Awareness, increasing reach to people, Advocacy, compelling them to share, and then affinity, connecting emotionally to them. If you can do all of those three things with different pieces of content, then you can get new fans. Um, we found this repeatedly at Marcom Strategies uh, with a couple of case studies with different clients. You have to engage them, communicate, and make them actually feel for the content. Just like a commercial that you don't feel with, you usually just change it or turn it down or just zone out, go to your phone. But a good commercial, let's say for example, the one that's been playing as of recently with Morgan Freeman and Peter Dinklage uh, from Mountain Dew. Everyone kind of stops and they're like, oh shit, this is pretty cool. And then you watch the whole thing. Um, so that made you connect emotionally in one way. So we have to try to harness that. Think about it in the scope of your client. Boom, try to make it happen. Um, and then if we go to audience, so think of how pumped these ladies get for Ellen every time she comes out. We want our 1,000 true fans to get as pumped as they see a new post that we do. Um, so true fans, those who have already shown love for us, we're trying to keep them, strengthen that love. Non-customers, people who are outside of our current customer base, but we can easily sw uh, sway them with the right content. 
Tone and voice, simplifying it as much as possible. Persona, who we are. Tone, how we sound, language, what we say, purpose, why we say it. I'm showing KFC here because as of recently, they've had pretty aggressive marketing tactics, trying to reinvent themselves and the Colonel himself. So I know as of recently, they've been using a country music singer, Reba McIntyre in the commercials. Um, on social, here's an example of the type of posts they do speaking in the actual Colonel's uh, voice as if it's him, trying to make him seem cool and whatnot. Um, and they do all of this knowing what they're going to say, why they're saying it, how they're saying it, as if they actually are the embodiment of Kentucky Fried Chicken, Colonel Sanders. Um, think of him like an outgoing uncle, if you will. I think of uh, uh, the uncle from Breaking Bad, Schrader, just kind of the way how he acts. I think of that in the embodiment of KFC. Um, and then they know who they're targeting their audience. Um, the people who will, who will fuck with them and buy some fried chicken and just enjoy these types of commercials with, say, country music stars, or as recently on social, they've been going with uh, WWE wrestling and things like that. So they know who their target audience is. We're going to try to do the same with you guys. This Friday, this is when your playbook is supposed to be due. If you're barely meeting your clients, and it's just impossible for you to have it done this Friday, then meet with us and then we can work something out to, uh, to extend it a little bit. But ideally we want everyone done this Friday so we can then begin planning for the content that's gonna be deploying next week. Um, we have a, a workshop on Friday, so super simple this week. Meet your clients if you haven't, do the forms as needed, and then put your playbook together. So, right at the very beginning, all these forms that I said at the beginning, you're gonna need to have done. Brand checklist, client intake form. Um, and then we're gonna need to create Canva accounts for your content creators. So when this is shared with you guys tonight, if you click on this Canva account link, it'll take you to a help page on how to create that account and give some brief information on it. That's where you'll be doing a majority of your content creation, um, saving those images as PDFs you can share with your team. It's not as, let's say, uh, quick to respond as Google Drive. So if you edit something, you can't have someone else on there working at the same time as you. So you'll have to learn to work with the bugs. That is Canva, and it will give you a headache sometimes, just be warned. But in the end, once you know how to work with it, you can make some beautiful art. Hopefully you all have Google Drive accounts. Um, we'll be creating folders in there for your team to have all your resources there. So that's the next step. And then creating a Trello account. Same thing tonight, follow this link on create Trello account and it'll take you to the sign up page on how to do it. Going a little bit deeper than that, after you have that account created, if you click on my link down there, accept my invite to this uh, brand science board that I've already created for you guys, I've tried to make it as simple as possible for the brand scientists to lead their teams into getting this playbook done. That uh, contains how to use Trello, uh, the purpose of the Trello board, the purpose of the brand scientist that has attached the brand scientist guide that has all the information from Facebook Blueprint on how to plan, monitor, evaluate, and analyze the content that you're going to be put out. And yeah, so if you click on that, you'll accept my invitation to there, and then it has step-by-step -step on the cards how you're going to be putting together your playbook. So super easy. Here's how you're going to fill it in. This is basically the TLDR of how to put the playbook together based on what you guys already have done. Content strategy. This is just your summary. This is a one paragraph intro on what you've learned from your client, the reason why they are asking for your help, and then what you're going to do. This is just your purpose. If you think about writing a research paper, you have to have a purpose at the beginning for why you're doing it. That is this. Objectives, those are given to you. We went over those last week. Categories, those are given to you. We saw them last week. Content matrix, we'll be making those today so you guys can understand how you can create these matrix, connect them to your content calendars, put it all together. Audiences, same thing. Those are in the Trello board, in uh, the audience list for content, uh, the playbooks, and you're going to be putting all this together from the brand checklist, client intake form, who your current fans are on social, 
cross-reference that with the list that you guys made last week. That'll make it easier on you guys if you've already been thinking about the types of customers who your client currently has. And as easy as possible, three customers, one of these profiles will be your true fans, one of them your non-customers, and one of your choice. Uh, channel strategy, you guys already have the example Bulls Farming Playbook, so a lot of that will be super imperative to just emulate into some of these, so like channel strategy, those things, you can use some of that information. I definitely would not copy it word for word, and that is because the algorithms on Facebook and Instagram have changed. So if you go on and say something on there that's completely wrong, we'll notice it, and your client might not necessarily notice it, but you won't be um, living up to the playbook, which is supposed to be the golden handbook that you just create everything with. Tone and voice, we went over that last week in the final activity and put that together from the forms that we've done and look at their pre-existing content on their social profiles already. I know teams have managed some of these in the previous semesters, could give you some good insight. Just keep digging, figure it out. Rules of engagement, follow that Trello board. Make sure you go to it. Even if you're not a brand scientist, there's a ton of helpful information on there. Style guide, I know that was a question that uh, they were asking about what type of fonts do I use, what colors do I use. Talk about that with your clients and your teams. And if you can't get a hold of your client, do what you think is best and then come over this Friday. And uh, no, Manny won't be there, but Phoenix, she is our creator from Arcom, and she'll be there to give you some good insight on how you guys can, can figure it out. And it'll just make it easier on, on you guys too. So here's our last team activity before we uh, end it this week. So guys, get out a piece of paper and see how we have here. This is from Bulls Farming. So we had the objectives. We know what we're trying to get as this outcome. Either we want to expand our reach, we want someone to share it, or we just want them to feel for it. Categories, promotional, think about just trying to rep yourself. Temporal, some type of holiday or something. Campaign, your large scheme, what you want your overall content objective to be. So for example, let's say the one that comes to the top of my head is the Lucky Lotus Lounge because I just recently looked at their playbook from last semester, but probably their campaign at the very end is to separate themselves from all other restaurants in that cuisine and just make sure that their name is the number one that comes to people's minds when they think of that type of food or the bar scene. And then you break that down into your pillars. Okay, well, what'll make them have that? So if it's a bar, it'd probably be eats, drinks, atmosphere, um, people who are there, and things like that. So example, for bulls, they are a ag tech farm. So they talk about things all the time of water, labor, the workers who work there, current policies that are going on, the culture of bulls, the feeling while you're there, how they treat one another, uh, waste. They're trying to be super sustainable and use as least waste as possible. The brand, so the name of Bulls in itself, the logos, and then food and farming. How the two connect, how that food actually gets on your table instead of just like teleporting there as like people think. And then formats. These are all pretty imperative also. So I want you guys to work with your teams or even if you don't have your teams, just write down what you think your current pillars could be, what you guys are going to be talking about, and this is also you can just put all this shit together at the very end for your playbook. Any questions?